It's okay. I think sometimes we think when we come to the Bible, I've got to start in Genesis and I've got to read it through to Revelation because if you're a linear person mm-hmm. like me, you're thinking, I don't want to miss anything. You're reading the table of contents. <laughs> you're reading the, if you've got a study Bible, you're reading every bit of commentary on, on what you're reading. Mm-hmm. And I, w- one of the things I would say in this discussion to those that are listening, it is okay. I want to free some people up right. and I want to say it is okay to be a little bit a little bit selfish, a little, just a little bit, with moderation, uh, and, yeah. and how you come to the Bible, because it's it would be it's much better for you to encounter God in the book that helps you the most right now than to read something that feels like it's disconnecting you from God. I'm not saying you don't need the whole Bible. We do. Mm-hmm. Uh, so hear my heart. I'm saying sometimes we think. We have to have the perfect framework to come to the Bible, and right. we just don't. God is, God is so much bigger than that, mm-hmm. right? Any thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I love, I love that you're dwelling in the Psalms because that's kind of just historically what Christians have done. I can't remember, I don't know if you know who said this quote, that the Psalms are a little Bible mm. because they kind of capture the breadth of God's character. Um, they summarize different parts of the story itself. Um, and so they become this really safe place to kind of hang out, and they naturally draw you into prayer. Um, but yes, I agree. There are times where somebody will come up to me and be like, hey, Evan, what book of the Bible should I be reading? Um, and I'll assign it based on what I know their season of life is. Like, If they're just coming to the faith, for example, and they've never read the Bible before, I'm probably not going to send them to a book where they're going to be reading a bunch of laws, you know, Mm, right mm -hmm, away. mm -hmm. I'll have them read, you know, the the stereotypical one is the Gospel of John or the Book of Romans. Um, So if you if you just need to say like, hey, this (laughs) year I'm going to commit myself to reading one of the Gospels and reading the Book of Romans, that's a really great place to start. But maybe like if you're, I remember there was a drier season i wouldn't maybe not dry season but i was kind of like wrestling with some big questions about the nature of god the nature of suffering the nature of life and i realized wait a minute ecclesiastes and job they tackle these questions head on yes you know i could read you know the song of songs where like they're frolicking through the flowers (laughs) and not addressing any of my heart questions Mm. Or I could go to the books that are wrestling with the exact questions that I have. And that's where you might need some guidance from somebody who knows the Bible and yeah, can yeah. kind of point you to those right books. But as you as you alluded to earlier, there's, there's almost a book for everything. There's some books that are prescriptive. They're telling you, like, you know, how to live a Christian life. You know, you read the letters. Some of them are descriptive about the life of Jesus. If you want to know more about Jesus, read the Gospels. And others are just deep, poetic, philosophical like Ecclesiastes, Job, the Psalms. and Yeah. So there's something for you in there. Yeah, I agree. I think that it's it's good to, if you're just starting out, it's good to start with maybe what you know. Yes. Or like where, where your interest is. If you're interested in the life of Jesus, starting in the Gospels. Yeah. But eventually you do have to broaden your palate mm-hmm. and go to the places that, maybe are Mm -hmm. a little harder for you, like the Old Testament, and do that with a guide or someone in your community group or like a mentor. Mm -hmm. Like if you feel like scared, like I'm used to just the Gospels, but I want to venture out into Paul's letters Mm -hmm. or maybe the Old Testament, but you don't know where to start. (laughs) Book of Revelation, right. You might call Pastor Garrett up and Mm -hmm. say, you taught that class. Can you, you know, guide me? And I think it's okay. I have no idea. I don't have any answers. (laughs) I think it's okay to ask for help. Yes. When you're reading and say, you know, I I don't know where to venture out past the Gospels. Right. And when you ask for help, you'll also discover that your frustrations and confusions aren't just because, like, you're incapable chances are that person has had those same frustrations. Like, <clears throat> I'll have people ask me about the book of Ezekiel. I'm like, man, I can't help you. <laughs> that, that's a weird book, you know? Um, yeah. And that's often comforting for people to hear because they're like, oh, my goodness, I, it's not because I have a low IQ or anything like that. It's just what the Bible is. Right. You know, it's a journey that we're all on together. Right.